I'm joined here on stage by our new and very gorgeous principal horn player, Katie Willey. Hello. Hello, nice to see you. Lovely to see you too. So Katie, very quickly, yes. just tell us, why are there three horns here? And, and, it, I, and I'm right, right? There's normally two or four. Normally two or four or eight or something like that. Yeah, normally even numbers. Now, Beethoven normally wrote for two horns because, as you say, this was the bridge between classical and romantic, and he was a little bit more based in his classical style of orchestration. So, two horns. But also, as you say, this piece is just so intense. It's so romantic. It's so heroic. It's kind of mournful. It's exciting. It's celebratory. They've got just way too many emotions going on here for two horns. And what is the instrument that covers every emotion under the sun? It's the French horn. So he added one to make sure you could really kind of get the most out of the sound of the instrument. Also because there are different keys back then that the horn played in, so they wouldn't have these valves here. They just had different lengths of tubing which they'd add on to make it play in different keys. So with two horns, you can basically have one key at a time, and then when you have three, you basically have many more colours and many more keys in which you can play. Okay, so the horns that were being played at the time didn't look like this. Exactly. They, they were just all done with the, with the lip. With that, and also a bit of that as well. That's why the hand is in the bell. We used to change the notes that way. Oh, I see. That's not just to hold it. It's, it's no. actually... Oh, I it's see. not just to keep our hand warm. It's uh, to actually change the notes. It's great. And there's a lot of tubing. On yeah. a horn. Yeah, there I is. Mean, I mean, how, how do you, I mean, because you spend a large amount of time taking bits out and, and sort yeah. of, and the stuff that comes out of the horn, yes. that's, just, just to be absolutely sure, yes. that's like water, right? I mean, would you drink it? No, let's not go there. Let's move on. Okay, if it, it's, it's condensation. It's mostly basically. condensation. Yeah. Okay. And in Corona times, we make sure that we have our own towels, which we then go and wash. So we take it all away. So every concert yep. is taken away, washed, yep. everything's exactly. safe. Okay, because yep. this is, of course, one of the issues with, uh, with playing in an orchestra is, yep, the, exactly. is the spread, which, of course, there isn't any, which has been proved many times. Great. Now, the way that horns are sat yeah. normally in an orchestra is that there's, let's just say there's four of you, mm -hmm. but, I, but it's also that it's like one, three, two, four. There's some kind of weird thing that you wouldn't necessarily n n would know unless yeah. you're reading a score. Can you just explain why that, why that is? What, what's, what's with the... Yeah, absolutely. So we like being mysterious, but generally speaking, so it does go one, two, three, four. This kind of goes back to the time when they had different keys without valves. So when Beethoven started to add more horns, you quite often have the first two, um, or Brahms even, people like that, first two in two different keys, or one key, sorry, and the people at the back, so three and four, would almost be like another set of one and two, principal and second, in a different key. So therefore you have like one team of high, low, and another team of high, low, and that just became the tradition. And so you have a high horn, low horn, high horn, low horn. Okay, well, thank you very much. Anytime. Now, the horn itself yes. is renowned for being extremely difficult to play. I, I am not envious at all that you do that. I, of course, get to play one of the coolest instruments, but you get to play one of the most difficult. Yeah. Why is it difficult, and how can we encourage people to, to play it more? It, it's such a beautiful instrument when played it's well. It's the most beautiful instrument. I think every instrument has its difficulty, um, and I think I would say that... Is, okay, the main thing which is difficult in inverted commas is the fact that the notes are very close together and so you might maybe, um, if you're not quite precise enough, um, go a bit below or a bit above. Um, it's what we call splitting a note. So that is possible. Um, but then again, it's a bit like on a violin or, or on a double bass. If you put your finger a little bit too high or too low, mm -hmm. you go a bit sharp or flat. Or your difficulties is carrying it around because it's very large. <laughs> you know, we all have different difficulties. But for me, it's not about the difficulties. It's about what the possibilities of the instrument are. Yeah. And I think every instrument also has amazing possibilities. And the, the upsides to this are just far too great to, yeah. to let the difficulties become a problem. Well, I have to say that the horns are featured highly, especially in the third movement, right? Yeah, we get to have a little bit of fun, yeah. It is, and it's really the most magnificent sound.